Welcome everyone, we're going to have an exciting session about how blood pressure control and home ECG monitoring help to prevent strokes. Hypertension is something that is much more frequent than we would ever think. We have different definitions. So a normal blood pressure is where the systolic blood pressure is lower than 120 millimeters mercury and the diastolic should be lower than 80 millimeters mercury. If the patient enters the prehypertensive phase, the systolic blood pressure is up to 120 to almost 140. And the diastolic is between 80 and 89. That's the definition of prehypertension. Once we enter stage one hypertension, systolic blood pressure is defined as 140 to 160 whereas the diastolic blood pressure is defined as 90 to 100. Stage 2, systolic hypertension, 160 millimeters mercury or more, and the diastolic is 100 millimeters mercury or more. So these are the definitions, prehypertension, stage 1, stage 2. Here's some more facts on hypertension. It's the most common primary diagnosis worldwide, the number one risk factor affecting our global health. And it's a major, major risk factor for stroke, myocardial infarction, vascular disease, and chronic kidney disease. Here's some more facts for you. The worldwide prevalence of hypertension in the adult population, as we have it in the Western world, is around 30 to 45%. This is certainly not trivial. The prevalence of hypertension in Europe ranges from 9 to 20% in the entire adult population and ranges from 44 to 60% in the elderly population. Big numbers, right? Most important is the awareness. Only 50% of the patients, I should say, that have hypertension are aware that they have it. So 50% is absolutely not aware, having hypertension. Key importance for you to know, hypertension is very prevalent, but it's also the most important modifiable risk factor for cardiovascular disease, the leading cause of mortality in Europe, stroke end stage, renal kidney disease, renal disease, and peripheral vascular disease. So if you diagnose hypertension, you can affect it and you can change these outcomes. Despite intensive medical therapy and guidelines that we have over the years, ranging from 2000 to 2016, as you see here, no reduction in prevalence has occurred. So we try but we're not reaching. With the aging population, as we start to seeing it more and more in the Western world, comes a huge increase in hypertension prevalence. You see here in blue, the entire population of 18 and over, in a little bit lighter blue is 18 to 14 uh, years, greenish is 40 to 60 years, and then the light green is 60 and older individuals. Let's focus on the light green. The total population, light green, okay, 60% increasing prevalence in hypertension. Men, almost 60%. Women, almost 70% in the light green, indicating aging population, 60 years and older, huge prevalence of hypertension. Once you got hypertension, it has been shown over and over that it's associated with worse outcomes. And that's even worse if we leave it uncontrolled. So we need to detect it in order to treat it. And the earlier we detect it, the higher the likelihood that we can prevent these negative outcomes, that we can prevent these adverse events. Now I switch to the relation between hypertension and atrial fibrillation. How does that work? Why do we see so much atrial fibrillation in these patients with hypertension? Because long-standing hypertension, as you see in this slide, 
results in aortic stiffness. And aortic stiffness results in left ventricular hypertrophy and an increased left ventricular and diastolic pressure. So LVH, hypertrophy, and increased and diastolic pressure are the markers that are related to left atrial dilatation. And when your left atrium dilates, you get fibrosis in that atrium. And when fibrosis occurs, that is the trigger for atrial fibrillation. So non-treated hypertension results in increased left ventricular hypertrophy and an increased left ventricular and diastolic pressure. And that results in term on left atrial dilatation followed by the development of atrial fibrillation. So we need to diagnose to be able to prevent it. Early detection at home is the only way forward. Because it's impossible that all these patients come every week to the general practitioner. So we need to go to awareness and self-detection. If we can detect it at home, it allows identification of patients possibly at risk for paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. And if we catch them early, we can treat them earlier. We can give them anticoagulation and we can prevent strokes. I'd like to conclude this introduction for the session. Hypertension is highly prevalent. Hypertension is associated with increased mortality. Hypertension is associated with cardiovascular disease and strokes. And hypertension is associated with atrial fibrillation. And atrial fibrillation, we talked about it, high risk of stroke. Early detection of hypertension and atrial fibrillation, that both of them permits early treatment, and that can prevent adverse events. Thank you very much for this introduction, and now we start with the session.